I want to talk about retirement, which is cool. Uh, I was just thinking the other day about how it's something that I've talked about with people from time to time in my personal life, um, just being really excited for retirement. And that doesn't seem that odd or uncommon or really much of a point to talk about because who wouldn't be excited, wouldn't be excited to retire? Um, I just wanted to talk about the reasoning for me and that kind of started leading me elsewhere while I was thinking about it, like I want to retire why and what's exciting about it and blah, 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 blah. So I am excited to retire so that I can just do what I want to be doing now, which is like what I, again, what I want to be doing now, not what I am doing now. Um, if you haven't already known that my, the absolute dream job for me would just be a full-time artist. That would be fantastic. That would be the best thing ever. I would just exist basically how I do when I'm not obligated to work, to pick, like, like to, to do other work. Um, that's like number one thing is being a full-time artist. Very close behind that is what I have been attempting to do for years now, which is be a full-time high school art teacher. That is something that I get a lot of a lot of reward from. I'm very passionate about it, and I love the work and love the job. And I've been fortunate enough to to experience that uh, for a short period of time for a contract that I had for a year and a half. Um, otherwise, the bookends of that time have been subbing. Which is not so much fun. If I was in my dream job with with high school art teaching or whatever, then that would be fantastic, and I would still look forward to retirement be, because I, I would look forward to just living, <laughs> like just having experiences, um, taking in media and relaying them and expressing them through through art, through different kinds of art, and that would be the only expectation of me. And I feel like that is incredibly productive and still gives back to, to people um, and is a reciprocal, beautiful thing. So why wouldn't I want to start doing that now? Of course I would want to do that now. So this isn't really just about retirement. I don't know what the title of this is going to be at this moment. But like I'm excited to retire not to just do nothing. I'm excited to retire so I could be way more productive than I am now. I mean, if I was full-time teaching, I'd be very productive, and I'd be very busy, and whatever, and I wouldn't have as much time to do art stuff. Um, subbing is uh, the whole other thing. But I mean, I wouldn't have as much time to do art stuff uh, if I was teaching, but it would still be incredibly rewarding and giving back a lot and, and whatever, and being very productive. Just productive in a different way. Whereas if I, I would get more set, it, it's like if you were being your own boss. It's like if I could have a high school art program that I teach without any bureaucratic stuff and be my own boss and be my own principal and my own admin and my own this and my own that, then that would be, there's no way to do that, really. I mean, you would start your own art school or something. But beyond that, it's like, okay, well, I have to go through all these these measures and jump through all these hoops and and play by someone else's rules, right? And retiring and yet still being productive as a full-time artist is kind of like being your own boss. You wouldn't need to retire to do that. There are plenty of people who are full-time artists. It's one of those things for me that I, I feel like I recognize that there's a certain amount of work ethic and a certain amount of luck but you make your own luck a lot of times, and then, I mean, a lot of people in the art and entertainment, um, arts and entertainment industry have talked about both of those things of, like, you just need to go all in and make it happen and work until it happens, and then it happens, and some people have mentioned, like, yeah, but it's, there's nepotism, it's about who you know, that people catch lucky breaks all the time, like, that you can't calculate or work towards, so it's, you know, you never know. And I feel like I don't have the the risk in me to just go all in and just, like, so many people work a full-time job and they have to push and push and push outside of that, basically working the equivalent amount of hours in a week on their, what would be a side project, would be their art, in order to 
make it happen and they transition out of whatever that other job was into art full time. That happens with musicians and visual artists and writers and so many actors, right? Like so many things of like working on your craft for as many hours as you can outside of that space. And it's something that if I was really thinking about it and like really serious and like, I don't know. It's not that I'm not serious about art. It's not, a, I, I hate the business end of it, but I do want to have my art reach more people. I would like to make more money off of my art and make what I believe it's worth so that I can put more into my practice and be a little freer with my time to really focus more on my practice. And money is time, right? Like money does equal more freedom with how I spend my time and what I need to do with my time to ensure that I have a roof over my head and whatever else. But it's one of those things like, man, if I, if I kind of was thinking about this while I was in university or I was this serious or I understood things better, then I should have been pouring all those extra hours in then and trying to find a mentor and have a path and like figure things out differently. And it's not like it can't happen now, but it's way harder um, with different obligations and relationships and family and play things that you have to do to spend your time, right? And things I want to do, where I want to spend my time. It doesn't mean that I can't make it happen, but there's, you know, I choose to live in a certain way where I only have so much time to do certain things, and I want a, a balance that um, equates to having fulfilling, healthy relationships and that, that give me back a lot, um, and that I also, you know, want to have good mental health and, like, take breaks and relax and, um, you know, this go, 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 go 100%, like, it's really difficult to... I, I need to find a way to be more productive than I am right now, but it's really difficult. So there's a part of me that has somewhat conceded to the fact that I would never be a full-time artist until retirement. Now... Teaching is also great. I mean, teaching high school, teaching university would be better, but I would need my master's to do that. Uh, I've applied for my master's. I did last year. I did not get in, and I have not reapplied. So, um, there's actually, it should be February right now that, that when there, there is the deadline. And that's just not something that I think I can do right now. Um, again, because these obligations of it's a scary thing to have to rely on grants and try to find money to whatever because usually they don't want you working while you're working on your master's because it's almost like a full-time job in itself. And there's doors that can open after that, but I need a stronger... I don't have the, the references for it either, honestly. Like, I did not keep in contact with many of my professors. Um, I didn't build really, really, really strong relationships and, like... These professional relationships that people want for applying to a master's. Um, and my, my body of work and my focus right now is not so targeted. Um, and, well, it's not focused. So I, I know what, like, I, it's like wanting to live the artist life. That's what I want, you know. Um, and that means different things to different people. But I mean, I want to live and breathe art and intake and ex, you know, inhale and exhale that and um, soak in media and use my lens to, to intake my experiences and then express them in different ways and like um, learn more about myself and humanity and relationships and people and whatever and express those things. So... Um, and why, why, why should I have the right to do that? And, uh, anyway, um, I don't remember where I was. I lost my train of thought. But it, that, that is really, really the dream. And I was going to say, oh, like, the good thing about teaching is that if I, it's incredibly fulfilling. It's also incredibly hard work. But I, I learn a lot. I enjoy it. So teaching at the high school level, something that I've experienced, if I actually had a full-time contract, I would be able to make enough money to tide me over during the summers. And guess what? Then during the summers, I can put a lot of hours into art. Whereas during the school year, I might be regulated to really only working on art during the weekends. 
Um, but for every year during the summertime, I can really, really focus. And that was a gift and a beautiful thing of putting all those extra hours in during the school year. Because I don't know how many hours, even just that one year that I did a full time and then the half uh, semester or the half year, which is one semester of part time, the amount of extra hours put in every day, like, I mean, it's a lot. Whether it be marking or organizing, uh, extracurricular things, um, spending class time outside with, with students and like supervising this and doing that. Like there's so much work that goes into it. It is not just the classroom hours that, you know, it's outside the classroom. It's out. Yeah. It's anyway. And all that basically translates to, you know, um, two months <laughs> of, of like not working and, I'm just saying, like, the amount of hours. I, I, if I were to add all that up, I'd be really curious to how, how much, um, how many, like, full... I mean, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, if I worked from whatever, however many hours in a typical work week at school in the classroom, but how many hours did I spend outside of that, um, if I added all those up, would they add up to me just being in the classroom for those hours during the two months of summer. Anyway, and I was talking about teaching at the post-secondary level, or I was getting to that, because that would also be just a beautiful thing, because you have even more free time and more money. Uh, I don't. It wouldn't be as rewarding for me to work with those students. Um, the free time, the money, the, the security, the benefits, all those things at that upper level um, would be incredibly beneficial. But Honestly, just high school is where it's at. That age group is where I want to be working with. Um, I find that connection to be something I really desire and work really well with those students. Um, and younger than that, not so much. And older than that, not so much. Um, there's just I just don't get the same amount of reward and conversation and learning and connection um, outside of that in a classroom setting anyway. Um, yeah, so that's me talking, I guess, about being a full-time artist and that desire and the realities of that and having to juggle and that if I really put my mind to it, then obviously I could try to make some moves and make some things happen and it's not where my mind is right now. Um, uh, maybe it'll get there. Maybe I'll find a real stride and some stability and I can really start pouring in some more hours on the side to making connections with galleries or whatever and figuring figuring things out um yeah i i don't know uh the, the future is who knows <laughs> um yeah full-time artist realities desires that's the short version of it, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we will see you on another time.